Hello and welcome to Jurisage Academy's YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss important weekly legal updates from 18th July to 23rd July 2022. But before we begin, uh, we have an official Telegram channel where we post daily subject-wise MCQs. So if you're preparing for any legal exams, do join the channel and benefit from this. Now coming to the first important news, the Supreme Court has held that a previous suit which is dismissed without adjudication on merits would not operate as res judicata. In the case of R.M. Sundaram versus Sri Kaya Rohan Sami Temple, the court has held that in this case, the previous suit was dismissed for technical reasons, which decision is not an adjudication on merits of the dispute that would operate as res judicata on the merits of the matter. The court has also held that a party which wants to claim and raise the plea of constructive res judicata must place on record in evidence the pleadings of the previous suit and establish the identity of the cause of actions. In second important news, the Supreme Court has held that a double presumption is available in favour of the accused after acquittal. In the case of Ravi Sharma v. GNCTT, the court has held that the law shall presume double presumption in favour of the accused after a due adjudication by the trial court. Therefore, in this case, the court acquitted the accused and reversed the order of the High Court. In third important news, the Supreme Court has held that an abortion cannot be denied just because a woman is unmarried. In an important case of X versus the Principal Secretary, Health and Family Welfare Department, while interpreting the provisions of the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1970 and the 2021 amendments to it, the court has passed an ad interim order allowing the petitioner to suffer an unwanted pregnancy would be contrary to the intent of the law enacted by the parliament. The court also said that allowing the petitioner to terminate the pregnancy on a proper interpretation of the statute Prima facie falls within the ambit of the statute and the petitioner should not be denied the benefit on the ground that she is an unmarried woman. The court has also said that distinction between a married and unmarried woman does not bear a nexus to the basic purpose and object which is sought to be achieved by the parliament. In fourth important news, the Supreme Court has held that non-forest activities cannot be permitted without prior approval from the central government. In the case of Narinder Singh versus Devesh Bhutani, the court, while interpreting the provisions of the Forest Act of 1980, held that a prior permission of the central government is required to allow any change of user of forest or deemed forest land. The court, while interpreting Section 2 of the 1980 Forest Act, also laid down the provisions with respect to private lands. The court has said, that considering the scheme of the 1980 Forest Act, the title holder of a private land, which is a forest within the meaning of Section 2, is not divested of his right or interest in the land, but there is an embargo on using his forest land for any non-forest activity. <laughs> Lastly, the Supreme Court has held that there cannot be two arbitration proceedings with respect to the same contract. In an important judgment of Mrs. Tantia Constructions Limited versus Union of India, the court has said there cannot be two arbitration proceedings with respect to the same contract or transaction in the present case. With this, we have come to an end of our weekly legal update. If you like this video, please like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.